Okay, uh, I've got gas in the gas tank, it's elevated, the bike is dropped down low, I've still got the carb sink gauges hooked up. Um, went through the carbs in the last episode, cleaned them up in an ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, cleaned up my fuel delivery. There was an issue there. Hey, I don't know where this video is going, but it may end in a ride. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so what have I done since the last video? Uh, really, all I've done is put the carbs back onto the engine and um, wasn't happy with the speed at which fuel was flowing in, you know, from the tank. And so I dove back into that fuel petcock valve and could not find a single problem with it. Um, but yet still was not getting a good flow even after everything was put back together so I just took one end of this fuel line and blew in it and sure enough it was totally obstructed so I still don't know what it is that I flushed or snaked out of there but I did snake a, a smaller tube through it and some wad of ugliness uh, did pop out of there and now it flows like crazy and I've got lots of good fuel available um, so I'm gonna try to fire this up again and let's see if we can get some heat out of number three cylinder this time I got fuel I got power I have a fire extinguisher I have spark plug wires plugged in I'm assuming I tightened that up since the last time I was in there uh, choke back to basics do have spark okay I've been turning it over here a bunch and I got nothing on one nothing on two nothing on three a little bit on four um, I have checked spark I have spark uh, I know I have compression I've checked that previously I knew I had spark I've checked that previously so still digging Okay, did uh, a little something off camera. I had the air filters off previously, and I plugged uh, one of, it was actually cylinder number one, plugged the carburetor and turned it over, and I got it to fire better. So I'm thinking, okay, I got too much air, and, um, and it was spitting fuel back on my hand. So then I put the air filters on, seemed to run a little better, and now I want to try just closing these uh, air screws on the idle circuit just a quarter turn and see what happens there. Okay, now I'm getting an idle.
progress. Um, let me tighten down these uh, slides and get them synced a little better. Probably should have bench synced them. Okay, a bunch of fiddling around, but um, I got it running. Had to, again, find a rebalance. Essentially, I ended up having to resync the carbs on the bike. Um, but I got it running now to where... I'm running a little rich. All right, power back on. What we want is a blue hue. See, and that is way too yellow. to the others. This is number three, which by the looks of the spark plug was running uh, not so rich. Let's see, power, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty nice blue.
that's looking good. Um, so I've got three that are tuned pretty well. The surprising thing is how varied the air screws are to achieve that. The air screws are so different from one, three, and four, and again, number two is not firing now. So uh, off with the carbs again, see what I can do about number two, got half an idea, and then uh, get the color tune out for number two again and get it dialed in with the others and we should be good to go. Okay, been messing around with color tune across all four and setting uh, the air screws and fuel screws underneath, playing around with different settings and um, to my surprise the color tune is very easy to work with. You just simply want to get this nice blue hue to it, um, but what's surprising to me is the differences between these carbs in the settings of these air screws. I've got some that are out like almost only one full turn and then some that are out like four turns but I'm getting blue light across uh, all four of them when I'm at idle so you know it's it's tuned at idle thing is am I uh, running lean or rich at other throttle positions at one quarter throttle or a half throttle or full throttle um, you know you don't want to be in a lean condition on one cylinder have the bike running fine but then you get out on the highway and go for an hour in a lean condition you're gonna burn a hole in the piston like I did three years ago with this thing so uh, unbeknownst to me it was running lean in number four and that's that's what happened so um, I the fun part here is I think and now I gotta do a bunch of little nickel and dime stuff I gotta oil these um, air cleaners I gotta get the gas tank from the ladder and put it on the frame um, and maybe take it for a spin wouldn't that be exciting made a mistake I put the gas tank on and hooked up the fuel line and then recalled that I have a vacuum line that has to go into number three and I have that blue um, nipple cover uh, cap on there right now because I was <laughs> tuning and I don't know that I'll be able to get that off maybe but I don't know that I'll get the hose on it without taking the gas tank off again. So, um, cannot have this fuel filter. This one is larger than the one that I used to have in there. And there just isn't the clearance for it. It ends up creating a bend in the fuel line that's so significant that I put pressure on the two po points at which the thing hooks up to the tank and the fuel rail. And there's so much pressure there that I had a fuel leak, uh, which you don't want that. So I've eliminated the filter. Um, you know, the screens, I had the screens that are within the tank out when I took everything apart. They're clean. We should be good. Uh, and I, I get clean gas around here, so. 
that should be all right. Um, and then, yeah, the vacuum line for the petcock, I had, uh, you know, you can't access that with these filters on and the tank on and all that. You need those hoses in place first, then the tank goes on. So, did all that off camera, sorry, but got it on. Fuel's hooked up, we're not leaking. I'm gonna have to touch up some paint on the engine here because I did spill some fuel. Um, so we should be ready to run like this. And uh, see if I can throw a seat on here. Check my brakes again. I still have a little bit of a brake fluid leak in the front and I have to repaint that caliper. Um, yeah, might be able to ride here. Another thing I will say while I'm noticing it, you'll see my glove is all torn up here. Um, these stainless steel zip ties look nice, but when you cut them off, you know, cut the excess tab off, they're sharp. And uh, I've cut myself more than once. Got band-aids on all over the place, and I'm uh, not a fan. to disengage so I'm in gear and I got the clutch in and it will not roll so I can't obviously ride it I, uh, I pulled the clutch in put it into gear and it killed So I'm back on the stand and the helmet is off. Um, obviously I've got an engine that runs now, but uh, I, if I don't have a clutch, I can't ride it. So the journey continues. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to become an urban monk and get notifications about when I'm doing things on uh, my Cafe Racer or my other projects. And uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>